I see your forehead. Are you ready for this? I don't know. Am I? I need to show you the hideous links that my family is going to to entertain ourselves in isolation. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, you have the bottoms too. <laughs> wow. How ugly is that? <laughs> Pretty good. It's supposed to be. Supposed to be what? Christmas tie dye. Um, it is, yeah. It looks like the elves vomited everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> or diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's my mom thing coming out suddenly. It's so ugly. So I'll get my L's right on that. <laughs> oh, that's great. I need that. Yeah, it's kind of what I was feeling today. Oh my gosh, me too. That's on my list of things to talk to you about, actually. Okay. Like, since last week. Um, so talk to me about since what well, you know what probably my wi-fi might be on the wrong thing hold on let me check um yeah it's so... <sighs> i wanted to talk to you about a couple things one is um performance anxiety which came up a lot last week you know when the pressure's on and how do you kind of pull your shit together yeah. in the moment um and then it's I don't know if you've been feeling this but we had the high of graduating coaching school last week yeah so for everyone that doesn't know we graduated we're certified coaches yay it's Friday today's Wednesday yeah yeah I've been really struggling with motivation mm -hmm. since then really struggling like and I guess I just didn't appreciate how two things how much physical mental and emotional energy I was putting into that yeah and then I think that everyone everyone in in the nation in the world we're just it's, we're so over it with this virus and this sense of how do you how do you summon the wherewithal to keep going day in and day out when it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse we had our record yesterday 36 deaths in one day in Oregon um so anyway those were the things that I was wanting to talk through with you today um and just get some some Gwenisms. <laughs> you, <need laughs> <Even some, laughs> you need some post-its for your wall some I do I do I do um okay well, I was gonna try to find it here we go hold on one second just so you can see my amazingness again yeah I, oh gosh wow <laughs> there there was actually an accident with with some blue spilled on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's blue fed in? No, there's right, exactly. It doesn't. There's no blue in Christmas. Well, I guess there is. You can you can, you can have a blue Christmas. <laughs> That's right. I think I'm getting ready to. I think I'm getting ready to have to avoid a blue Christmas. Oh. Uh, yeah. So um I hear you. I mean, out the our coursework over nine months was coursework it provided some structure um and I think everyone is struggling with we just don't have structure right now we used to have work schedules we used to have school schedules we used to have sports and practices or lessons or you know any kind of extracurricular activity and and everything is threatened right now so it's really hard and I think we all like to assume that we were so internally motivated um, that we could carry that out at home with no schedule. And it's not easy. It's it's kind of sad. Oh my God, yes. 
you are making me realize what it is, is that without that external structure telling me when to do what and how to be and how to, you know, push myself, I just don't, I, I'm finding myself wanting to kind of crawl in a hole and just wait it out. That is a very strong urge in me right now. Yeah. yeah. And um, you're not alone. Uh, my son asked for some discussion time later um, because he said he's struggling with motivation. And I thought, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we all? Well, and that's an interesting thing too, is like when you're the person, this is what I've been grappling with, is when you're the person that other people rely on to bring the structure and to bring the motivation, what do you do? You know, what, like, and, and that's on a, on a professional level for, for us as coaches, right? People look to us um, to help guide them toward finding their own inner motivation. Yeah. All right. I get it. So, um, you know, there's just, there's no magic in it. Um, it's tough stuff. And I just keep reading that, you know, it's our big brain that it's job. It's main job is to protect us from pain and to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really struggling right now. Mm -hmm. Because, because we're not safe from fear and we're not safe from emotional um, stress and depression and anxiety. And so if we stay up here and try to logically think through it, it's not going to work because that part of us just doesn't do that. Um, whatever it is has to come from our heart or our gut. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to be courageous and we have to be intentional and make the choice to do things every day because we love them and we know it will bring some sort of caring and compassion and joy um, into our lives and just just go with it go with our heart um i i thought to myself it's just time for me to spend the next few weeks being a mom just be a mom and you know just enjoy this if I ever in my life could have imagined <clears throat> to be home for the whole month of December yeah. with my kids at home, I would have thought I had won the lottery. Here I am. So what am I going to do with it? Yeah, it's like you're kind of flipping it, it, flipping it on its head in a way, right? Like you're... Yeah. Um, that's, that's a good idea. You know, the other thing that um, has been a little bit helpful to me is doing some of that, the embracing the absurdity, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of absurdity, like my outfit, yeah. my outfit is absurd. Um, and yeah, just and looking to other sources sometimes when you can't find it in yourself. Yeah. Um, I saw this post, uh, I love Glennon Doyle, as you know, I read her book Untamed and this year, and, um, she posted a picture of herself like this. <laughs> oh yeah. And she just said, I'm just tired of the suck. I'm tired of sucking. I'm tired of the hard. I'm tired of the never ending. And she's referring to the virus and 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 then she said um if this is depressing then you only have yourself to blame for following a depressed inspirational speaker <laughs> yeah, that's good <laughs> funny i thought that was really funny and but but i think too sometimes i think i mentioned this a couple episodes ago that when the people who seem like they're inspired all the time admit that they're not huh. it is a little bit it's kind of liberating it is. and so I think there's that and then the other place that I look to is my seven-year-old even though she is exhausting <laughs> but her perspective on life is 
still so pure and so straightforward. Um, yesterday, our advent was to do something for the environment. And so her idea was that we would go over to this field. It's basically, it's a construction site that is gonna have houses on it in the future. And we take our dogs over there. And <laughs> so we, we took a bag and we picked up trash because there's a ton of trash over there. Right? And she turns to me just as the sun is setting and she slings the bag of trash over her shoulder and she goes, mom, doesn't it just fill your heart that we saved nature's life today? Aww. Doesn't it just fill your heart? I just started laughing because that's how she sees it, that nature was on the brink of dying and we Yay. just saved it by filling up one bag of trash. <laughs> It's every little step. If everybody made one little step, one little bag of trash. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, but it's fleeting, right? So it, yeah, that really lifted my spirits yesterday afternoon when I was kind of struggling. I didn't really feel like making dinner. Um, and so then, so today I have to like, what is the next thing? And so today, my thing is that I'm going to wear this hideous tie-dyed outfit all day long. Good. Go I'm going to attend meetings wearing this hideous tie-dyed outfit. You go, girl. Um, if there's any antidote, it is humor. It is laughter. It is having fun. It is quit taking yourself so damn seriously. Oh, we're, we're all here for some purpose, but it's also to enjoy this life and don't think about what we have to do. Um, think about what we get to do. I mean, I'm yeah. serious. Think about the month of December as we get to do whatever we want with our families at home all month long. Can I tell you one thing not to do? Yeah. I already did it and I got it. <laughs> What? Um, holy God, do you hear that in the background? Yeah. Maria is playing her iPad at like <laughs> decibel 11. Hey, Mill, could you turn that down? <laughs> Thanks. Good gracious. Okay, two things. Yeah. Number one, I don't suggest <laughs> tying a mask. <laughs> that was stupid to just look. <laughs> and do you do me to go to the store like this today? <laughs> Yeah, I do. It looks like you have a bloody nose with snot or phlegm coming out. <laughs> I have to go to Rite Aid today. I, sure. I'm totally going to. I'm. I am going to do that. You I have to do it. Of and you need to secretly take some video while you're walking. <laughs> all right so here's what you should definitely not do with your family i have all these memories of films that i absolutely loved growing up um and i keep trying to show them to my kids and they don't hold up oh, and so the most recent example of this is the long kiss good night with gina davis and samuel l jackson <laughs> Oh my God, I played it up so much. I was like, we need popcorn. You're going to love, we have to watch it on the big TV. You're going to love this so much. It was so bad. Jack, he, he gave himself a timer. After 20 minutes, he was like, mom, this is terrible. I am not watching another <laughs> second of it. I am not. It is so bad. Do you remember that movie? I don't think I've even seen that movie. Okay, don't watch it. Okay. <laughs> Utterly horrible. <laughs> horrible, horrible, horrible. But I do Not remember what you remembered, huh? No, no. I remember Gina Davis as this like badass killer mom. And that was the plot, but it was just absolutely hideously carried out. But I do recommend Die Hard One and Die Hard Two. Ah. My kids did love the, those and they hadn't seen that before. So. Okay. Um so you know, you said take we need to not take ourselves so seriously. So I'm curious, like what tips you have for people 
who are having to do some kind of uh, performance or test because last week's oral exam was so hard for me. I, I, can't, I can't remember. I mean, the actual exam itself was fine. It was the anticipation of it. Oh. Um, I don't remember other, maybe like this eight person panel interview with physicians that I had to do to get my last job. That That is probably up there hmm. in terms of anxiety. But last week, I, I, I thought that I was going to have like a spasmodic attack <laughs> when I, because, you know, we're waiting, you know, the structure was you, you join the Zoom and then they let you in and then there's two assessors and then there's the coach and the client. And I just got it in my head that I was going to either like have a spasmodic attack and just like flip out and and be paralyzed <laughs> or this is the other thing that I kept telling myself because you know I can be a little inappropriate um or a lot I can be a lot inappropriate and I was really afraid that I was just going to start be, like saying the f word <laughs> <laughs> you may not have passed I would I wouldn't have passed I mean I'm not going to use the word stuffy to describe that program, but it's, you know, it takes itself seriously. And so if you showed up and dropped above a bunch of F-bombs, I don't think that you'd get another chance. You know, they said, like, if, if you don't hit all the competencies, then we'll give you another shot. But if you show up and are just like, Uh, that's not going to happen. Might not be good. No. And you might not no. get a second chance. Right. Ooh. So I actually had somebody that texted me Saturday morning and said they were just notified Friday evening that they were one of final final candidates for a big promotion and they wanted to interview her Monday at 1130. So um, we decided probably best to have a coaching session Sunday evening so she could really, you know, work through um, some of that rather than wait till Monday morning. And um, so what we did um, was practice what she really wanted to say, mm -hmm. um, regardless of what question is asked, you basically know what you're going to be asked in an interview. So practice what she wanted to put out there and think about whatever question is truly asked, what, how she was gonna use her packaged uh, responses to make sure she gets to articulate her passion and her vision. And then she had a, a sheet with all the details and she had planned to follow up with that. And instead we decided she should send that sheet with the details in advance um, to everybody that was gonna interview her so that they would know she had thought about it so that she would kind of get it off her chest mm -hmm. and take the weight off her shoulders. So that when it was time to interview, she didn't have to sit up here in her head with details and analytics. Um, she could just be there during the interview and be present and connect with all, all of, you know, whoever interviewed her. Um, and her focus was going to be on mirroring um, mm -hmm. everybody, looking at the camera, looking in their eyes, and mirroring them. So if they were up front, then she'd lean up front. If they were laid back, she was not going to go like that. But, you know, lean back a little and get more relaxed um, and try to make a game of it. Because the best way to connect with people is to mirror their tone, their pitch, their pace, um, and their body language. Um, so we just, you know, asked her uh, to think about how to make a game of it the next day and have a little fun. And then um, I also turned my video off for a minute and said I needed to prepare something. And I came back on. I'd been wearing a sweatshirt um, and had my hair down. 
I just came back on with my hair back, lipstick on, and a black blazer. Wow. And I said, now, yeah, how does that feel? And she was like, oh my God, I suddenly got butterflies and I got jittery and I got nervous. And I said, okay, what are you going to do in that moment when the screens pop on tomorrow? How are you going to calm yourself? And so we practiced that. And it was just deep breathing ahead of time. It was just calming and centering herself before the interview started. And then I just started taking my hair down and wiping my lipstick off and taking my jacket off and, you know, showing her that these people that are going to pop on the screen tomorrow in their fancy schmancies and, you know, all coiffed hair are the same people that on Sunday evening, like us, were sitting in our jammies and in our sweatshirts with our hair, however, and no makeup on and, and tried to get her to visualize Whenever she sees people that might be uh, in an interview or a position of authority and they're intimidating, uh, just to try to picture them at home with their families, you know, doing silly, wacky stuff that all the rest of us do. So she called me after the interview and she said it was amazing. Um, and she felt so good. And she just kept telling herself through the interview, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. I'm as prepared as I can be. And whether they choose me or not, that's their choice. That's really good. I love that. Um, what I did was, and it did work because I did pass, um, was I did, I, I walked. So I got some of my energy out or I, I walked which is my new thing that You're I do. You're walking is, now, okay. I'm walking, I'm walking. <laughs> okay. I walk and then I jog a little bit mm -hmm. and then I walk and then I jog a little bit. But I only jog when it feels good to jog and I stop if it feels bad. Mm -hmm. um, so I walked and I called my dad um, because he's always he's like my biggest fan. Uh -huh. And um, I, I prepared, so I... I had all these visual cues, which of course you can't have in, if you're doing it in person, but because it was Zoom, I could. Yeah. So I had all the different questions I wanted to make sure that I hit in the structure. Mm -hmm. And then I had this quote that I thought was really helpful that I kept reading that was right in front of me. And it was from our classmate, Stephanie, oh. um, who said, most of life's magic is right on the other side of being brave. Mm -hmm. So I kept reading that. And then um, I did this exercise that my therapist taught me a couple of years ago to manage anxiety called four, seven, eight, where you breathe in for four, you go hold for seven. Okay. And then you put your tongue behind your two front teeth on uh -huh. the top and you go yeah. for eight. Okay. And you do that four times and it supposedly move, helps you move from your um, parasympathetic to your sympathetic. Okay. I might, I might have that wrong, but it just takes you out of that place of feeling like you're in fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. And what it does for me is because I have to focus on doing it right. It makes me forget whatever I was just saying to myself. <laughs> Yeah. So, distraction technique and and then the last thing I did was remind myself I chose this yeah no one is forcing me to be here and that's a technique I've used when I've run marathons that's a good when one. I hit when I hit the wall which is for me usually around mile 19 okay. and um I just would I'm like I'm here by choice mm -hmm. so like come on mm -hmm. just keep going Mm -hmm. and those techniques helped um I think that's that, that's huge too Liz choice you know yeah. truly our lives all of us are, are about choices and we can get in a rut of victimization uh we, we can get nervous about something we signed up for um but to remember we're making a choice you know even in this COVID period we're all making choices to stay home. Yeah. It, 
the National Guard's not going to come and arrest us if we walk out our front door. <laughs> They're not. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, it's illegal to. It's not illegal. Um, or I'm breaking the rules. I don't want to be a break, rule breaker. It's not a rule. These are guidelines that are being presented for. Um, so we are all making choices because we want to be good citizens and we don't want people to get sick and we don't want the guilt and fallout if we're a super spreader of some sort. And so I get it, but still, ultimately, we are making those choices and we have to recognize um, they're not easy choices. They're not fun choices. And, you know, there's not any other great choice to make but we're still making them. Yeah, that's that's also a really good point. And speaking of getting a second chance, when you drop, drop a bunch of F-bombs, we had, I had an employee yesterday um, who is a medical assistant and she, you know, we had add an, added another layer of protective gear because we're in, our numbers are absolutely terrible right now. And she just had a moment of, she actually did. She said, I just was so anxious about this protective equipment and I just kind of lost it. And she did, she she cursed a bunch at her <laughs> supervisor. And uh, so then she had to meet with me and the um, practice administrator. And she actually just showed up and was really, she's like, I'm sorry. I don't, she's like, I just had a moment. I just had a moment and I, I don't, I do understand why we're doing this and it's just really, really hard. And so we, rather than it being this like, you know, disciplinary conversation, we just all acknowledge none of us signed up for this, right? You know, whatever job we're doing, whether it's homeschool mom or essential frontline worker having to wear tons of PPE, or an Amazon delivery driver, you know, who's delivering packages. And I think I had one delivered at six in the morning. Like none of us signed up for this. And it's really freaking hard. It's really it, freaking it's, hard. It is really freaking hard. Um, and yet we, you said, you know, we're making a choice. And what we said in the meeting yesterday is, if we're choosing to work in healthcare, right. which we don't have to, no, we can be like, I did not sign up for this kind of healthcare. I right. see Christ right. out. But if we are choosing to work in healthcare, this is what we must do in order to keep people safe, in order to keep ourselves safe. Mm -hmm. Right. We can probably all go work for Amazon this afternoon. If I went to Amazon, I would definitely do this <laughs> interview. Yeah. I think they would be more likely to hire me if I were. They would love it. <laughs> it's the top of the list. <laughs> oh, well, my friend. I've got a quiz for you. Oh, good. <clears throat> Which celebrity mother are you? Are you ready? I'm ready. <clears throat> That's their nine questions. Number one is, it's your turn to plan a play date for your mom's group. Which one would you pick? Four options. A sushi lunch and renting a local playground for the day. An outdoor adventure. Enjoying a glass of wine while the kids play outside. Cooking, decorating, and an apple bobbing contest. Outdoor adventure. Outdoor adventure. Which is your family dream car? Mercedes station wagon, anything reasonably priced and safe, DVD screen equipped minivan, family car, give me a red sports car instead. Probably, well, I did have a minivan with a DVD in it, but I hated it, so I got rid of it because I couldn't what is stand your driving. family dream car? Okay, family dream car. I think this safe, safe and reasonably priced. Okay. Plastic surgery, thoughts? I'm okay with how I look now, but I would consider getting work done in the future. I'll pass. 
Who wouldn't want to look younger? Maybe a few touch-ups here and there. I think I'm, I've already been there, done that on the plastic surgery thing. So, okay. um, so I have the, the 2020 hindsight, but I'm going to answer it as if I haven't done that yet and say maybe a few touch-ups here and there. Okay. You were at the hair salon, which would you ask for? Something manageable, something that stands out, maybe a bright color, something modern and stylish, or something cute that highlights my facial features? Modern and stylish. <clears throat> Pick a family photo theme, sleek with a city line, a day at the beach, traditional countryside, a carnival. Day at the beach for sure. Which best matches your idea of spending quality time with your kids? Eating together and sharing stories, family vacations, dancing, singing, and being silly together, home videos and board games, or as long as we're together, the specifics don't matter. I'm struggling between the eating together and telling stories because we do that every day, but I think our best times are our family vacations. So I'm gonna go with that. Okay. Spring is here. What do you plan to purchase on your shopping spree? Simple tees and faded jeans, maxi dresses and chunky jewelry, flip flops and sweats, bold colors and animal prints, or pearl earrings and a new bikini. <laughs> no, not that. Um, T-shirts and jeans. Was that one of the choices? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would get. All right. It's vacation time. Which is most ideal? A day at the zoo, cheap eats, bustling markets, and local music, spa treatments and wine tasting, sleep, or backpacking through the wilderness? I'm doing this with my kids. Yeah. What, well, just says it's vacation time. What is most oh. ideal? Okay, I'm gonna do the um, back, backpacking. Well, actually that's not right. Cause I wouldn't go backpacking, but I do, I would go in the wilderness. I just okay. wouldn't sleep in it. <laughs> it doesn't say sleep. You can backpack for a day trip. Okay, that's what I do. And the last one, if you could own any piece of jewelry, which would you choose? Something that really shines, the more carrots, the better. Black distressed leather choker, simple burst stone bracelet, a classic pair of princess cut diamond studs, a unique necklace with native stone beads. Definitely the first one. I have a diamond problem and this is well known about me. The more carrots, the better? Yes. Okay. Submit, click to get your results. Ah. Now I have to answer questions. Demographic question, so they can mark it to you later. Of course. Ah. And now I'm stuck. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Did it kick you out? No, it's been frozen. Oh well, we will continue next week, same space, same time. I already know who I am, though. Who are you? Alanis Morissette. Are you? Yeah. If I were to think of a celebrity that I would most emulate as a parent, it would be her. Okay. Well, My, maybe minus the, um, she's a little more woo woo than I am, okay. but, um, but I still bet she'll go to Rite Aid dressed like this. <laughs> think she would you don't think so mm -mm. Mm -mm. and i'm wondering how long is her hair these days 
Oh, it's super long. So here's something crazy. She just had her third child and we are the same age. She just had a baby at 46, which makes me tired just thinking about it. I can't imagine. Yeah. And isn't there a Broadway show now about her songs yes. from Jagged Little Pill? Mm. Yes. Yes. So she's coming back around. Yeah. She does. She is kind of a cyclical person. I think she has that understanding about um, being in the public eye mm -hmm. that you kind of got to, you come in and then you get a little overexposed and then you retreat and then you come back, wait for yourself to get, you know, kind of out of the zeitgeist for a bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she's coming back around, mm -hmm. but she's, we've, um, we've been friends for like 20, oh, yeah. 25 years. <laughs> She doesn't know it, but we're, we're very close. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> so is that our lesson? We just push through for a while and then we retreat. Mm -hmm. get, yes. Get some little energy, get a little different focus and then whoosh back at it. Oh my God. <laughs> that is the epiphany of the day. You got to Alanis Morris said it. Ah, uh, yes, Alanis Moore said it. Oh, that is, that is, that's my mantra. She's brilliant. Yeah. She's she our is. age. She is. Looking hot, having kids on Broadway. Yeah. She's basically a badass. She's a badass. Yeah. Okay. We're going with her today. Yeah. Yep. Yes, we are. All right, my friend, I'll send you a pic from Rite Aid. I cannot wait. I truly cannot. Oh, sorry, Gary. I just ran over my dog. 